All right, guys, Big Tasty back uh, for the first video of, I guess, 2024 Supercoach. Um, so yesterday, the AFL, Andrew Dillon has came out with the biggest change seen in a long, long time, being the round zero concept. Uh, it's something I just wanted to go over. Um, I've seen a couple of people go over it already through Twitter, through Discord, through YouTube. We'll go through those. Um, and I also want to talk about how it impacts Supercoach, um, as well as like how Supercoach can improve, handle it, stuff like that. So it's an important video, uh, you probably want to stick through to the end, where I'm going to go through like engagement strategies for Supercoach and stuff like that. So, uh, the opening round, as you can see, they've got, uh, you know, their nice pretty graphic. Four games, eight teams, starting on a Thursday. Starting on a Thursday is a big deal. Um, along with the little graphic, they did put out a uh, kind of like statement. We'll go through it. Um, obviously, they've got the you know, new AFL golden boy in Damien Hardwick to like, yeah, promote it, I guess. Um, but we'll go through it. The 2024 season will begin with an opening round where four games will be played for premiership points the week before the traditional round one. So, here's the big deal. Um, played for premiership points. This is where, uh, I guess, the controversy lies, right? Like, this could easily be premiership, uh, not a premiership, a uh, preseason round, right? A uh, promotional AFL preseason round. Send a couple of super important teams up north, uh, expand the game, which does need to happen. Um, you know, if, if the game doesn't actively try to expand, we stagnate, we get bad, viewership drops, attendance drops, right? Like that's, uh, look at every league in the world, right? It's important to have games that are expanding the league, but this being played for premiership points is a huge deal because it means it's the official start to the season. <clears throat> for the first time in AFL history, the Toyota AFL Premiership season will begin with an opening round. Now, this is the most nothing statement of all time because the first round of anything is the opening round. <clears throat> but well, like it says, right, so this is the first round of what they're calling the, <clears throat> the 2024 Premiership season. So... You know, it's a big deal. It's not something that the AFL is just going to sweep under the rug um, and it, it means nothing, right? Like, I think the original idea for Gather Round was it was a pre-season thing. Um, but then it became a, round, a premiership season thing and it's probably the best addition they've added in a, the last couple of years. Um, I thought Gather Round was a huge success. The only thing is I think the showdown should be played in Adelaide uh, that round instead of you have two Adelaide teams, it's their home ground, and they're, like, getting an extra home game. Not a fan of that. I think the showdown should be played that week. Only thing I've got with that. So, uh, eight teams will play in the opening round, and then we'll have a bye between rounds two and six. So that gives you, what, uh, three, four, five, six, four rounds for eight for the eight teams to have a bye. So it's probably, what, two per, two per week? Is that right? Yeah, it is. Um, with all 18 teams in the competition having played the same number of games by the beginning of round 7. So, if you're like most of Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, it's, it's Twitter. It's, no one's ever going to refer to it as, as X. Um, round 7 is where the season's going to turn back to normal. So, we'll see what that means for Supercoach because there is a big... Thing that happens in round six, which is the first DPP changes, which um, after this year you can see you really want to target that, uh, bring in players, or like intentionally not bring in players or bring in guys that are going to get a positional change. You saw it with Dacos, you saw it with um, what, all the forwards, <laughs> all of them, um, got the, the midfield DPP, right? So it's a big deal round six. Saying it's going to be round seven where all the teams have done their buy, this is where the season goes, right? Like, it, your team is basically, you can plan for it accurately after round seven, not including injuries. 
It's a big deal. Um, as for why they're doing this, right? Like this is, it's a clear thing, right? Um, even a blind person could see why they're doing it. The, um, there's even a spot here where it says it. Maybe it's in the other article. Um, yeah, it might be here. Yeah, okay, here we are. Uh, the opening round of games is part of the AFL's ongoing plan to grow the game in the Northern States. So here's the deal with this, right, as well. Um, they're only doing it in the, I guess, like, popular part of the North, which is Brisbane and Gold Coast. They're not actually trying to expand the game far north, where there's a whole lot of talent. Um, like, you got... They, they used to do the game in Darwin, um, right? And that was a great game as well, because, like, you know, you'd get the uh, indigenous population stuff involved, and you know, it kind of makes it a cool thing. They're not trying to do that. You know, we've got the indigenous round and everything, but they're not actually trying to expand the game up there. Why not put a game in um, Cairns and a, a game, you know, even further up north on, like, you know, they've got the islands and stuff up there. Um, put a game in Northern Territory, National Rugby League, which will start its 2024 season in Las Vegas, uh, has only one game in Sydney. Okay, so <laughs> we see what they're doing, right? Like, um, NRL's out of town. Let's get them while there's nothing for them to watch, right? There's only one game in Sydney. People are going to be bored, want to go see sport. They go to the AFL. And AFL's hoping out of that, say they get like 5 to 10% of those people convert into being AFL fans. Not going to happen. Um, as someone who has family up there, it's rugby or nothing, right? Like, they don't like AFL. It's it's not, uh, oh, we don't know about the AFL. They know. They just don't like it. It's too soft of a sport. Um, and it's getting softer. Um, but they don't like it. This isn't going to work. Uh, of the, you know, I'm guessing it's around about 10% is the margin they'd want. Um, obviously they'd want more, but like 10% is probably where you want for the first time you're doing it. Um, I doubt they're even going to get 1% of like a carryover. But yeah, uh, it's a big deal what they're doing. Um, so we'll go into what it means for Supercoach and the way people have talked about handling it, right? So for this, we're going to go through two of the biggest content creators for Supercoach, in my opinion, uh, JD and George, all right, Fantasy Take TV, um, this is what JD's posted on Twitter, all right, go follow his Twitter, it's great for Supercoach, a lot of good stats and stuff, um, yeah, I can't advertise it enough, especially if you played AFLW, this is a good place to be, I couldn't play AFLW, I was so burnt out on football, I couldn't do it, um, pulled up the website one day and the recording software, thought about it, couldn't do it. I was just too burnt out. But we'll go through it. All right, round zero. Uh, he's saying make a round zero a best of... Th this is all working under the umbrella that Supercoach, Fancy are going to implement round zero, which I think they will. I think they are going to be going to have to. Um, they ha they're the only two companies with an official AFL license. Um, the Herald Sun and, I guess, AFL Fantasy is run through the AFL. Uh, they have to. Um, if this is being promoted as the opening round and it's do like meant to boost engagement of the AFL and everything, I think being official platforms for the AFL's content, Supercoach and Fantasy are going to have to start in round zero. So, um, round zero, we're saying it's best of 10. I'd say best of 12, but best 10, because uh, I think 12 is the correct multiple, so you have like the, the per lines. Um, deal. Um, best ten and still means you're still required to pick a full team. I, you know, if you have to do a round zero, I agree with this, right? Make it a a super buy round where, like, we had it in the um. I still don't know if I'm now allowed to say the uh thing that happened for two years that left a lot of us inside. Um, you know that thing that was spreading around. Um, during when footy was impacted by that thing, um, we had a couple of, you know, like this super buy rounds where it's, you know, half the team's out. So it's best 10, best 12, best 15. Um, and then after round zero, players from round zero, you want 
to move on still cost a trade. I agree. If you start someone in round zero and you get a score from them, or, or you don't, maybe they don't play, if you pick them with the intent that they were going to play, you should be... You should have to trade them out and it costs a trade, right? Uh, players from teams who debut in round one still have unlimited trades as long as they trade to another round one player. This has got to be the way it's done, right? You can't do the cutoff for unlimited trades is this Thursday night, where is it? If you make this the cutoff date, you're not going to see rookies from these games. You're not going to see rookies playing from any of these teams. It's going to be all guesswork. I already think that uh, the beginning of Supercoach is way too casual friendly. Um, and uh, being casual friendly is a good idea. It gets people to play the game. Being way too casual friendly is what's killing games. You know, like even look at video games, look at 2K and League and stuff like that. Getting too casual friendly. Um, but going on further, if we... You know, don't do this. You're going to miss out on so many rookies. So I think this has to happen. Uh, from round one, if only two teams are on buy, it's best 22. No free trade boost for these rounds. I agree. No more free trades. No more added trades. No more trade boosts. No more any of this. It is killing the game. Uh, let's be honest. It's killing the game. Um, obviously, it got through to Herald Sun and stuff. Trading is the most entertaining part of the game, right? It is the planning of trades, bringing in a guy that scores 200, bringing in a guy that um, gets hurt and stuff like that. It's like, oh, you know, wasted a trade and stuff like that. That's the best part of the game. We can't keep adding trades. I think we're at 36 now. It's either 35 or 36 we're at. No more. If anything, I want it dropped. We'll go into that second half of the video where we're talking about changes to make to Supercoach. Uh, we can't add any more trades. So I'm 100% on board with this. Uh, I'd almost say if it's only two teams, which is the way I've worked it out to be, make it a normal round. It's not even best 22, just normal round. Bench those guys. And you get... Um, because the... you got to look at incentive and, like punishment, right? So if you pick, where are we? Um, Laird, Dawson, Parrish, Merritt, Brayshaw, um, other dude, I can't remember his name. Uh, you know, guys from these teams, like, you know, Harley Reid, Bont, McRae, Bailey Smith, all these guys, right? Wines, Rosie. There's too much of a punishment on them. You'll get a zero from them. Not a uh, bad score, not the average, a zero. They are not counting. You are potentially getting a donor because of these guys. Um, you, you Then you have to pick from these teams, and I don't think there's anyone... Uh, Goulden, apart from Goulden, there's no one I'd touch on Sydney. Um, we'll talk about the Brody Grundy situation. It's still... Hot. Like, we need to see the price, right? Once we see the price, then we go into Grundy, but right now... Huge no, right? He's looked terrible for two years. The incentive for picking these guys is too high. The punishment for picking round one teams is too high as well. So I think... Um, where were we? Uh, I've, I've lost my train of thought. Um, but essentially what I was saying is like you have to balance it out, right? So... If we, <clears throat> sorry about that, I've had a coffin fit. Uh, what I was saying is if we keep it as, we make a best 22, your the incentive for picking around zero players is still too high because, you know, you're just getting around one players now. I think if we make it normal week, you have a potential for a donut on field in round zero, you have a potential for a donut uh, on field in the round zero teams by round, um, it's fair. I think it is fair. I don't think we should do best 22 for um, two team buys. But again, I'm not, like, <clears throat> that's not something I'm super against. Uh, the wild card. So this is from FPL, right? Um, for those who don't play, the wild card is um, a thing you press, you turn it on, 
and you have unlimited trades that week. Um, pretty simple concept and something that I've seen people want Supercoach to add. I'm not for it. I'm so not for it. Um, a big part of Supercoach and Fantasy is picking the right starting team. Correct. A full wildcard after round zero allows you to observe and pick up risk-free, pick up full risk-free, the best mid-prices and rookies. Uh, very few of the primos who played in round zero will be kept as they will as they have one less game to play than everyone else. I agree. Um, the combination of these mean that round one sides will be very similar. Uh, we pick all the same value options from round zero and now select a much smaller premium pool of round one players. The combination of these mean that round one sides will be very similar. Oh, okay, I get what he's saying. Uh, so if we add a wild card, everyone's just going to pick round zero players. It's going to be like... Um, Super uh, the BBL Super Coach, where you can really just pick double game week players. Um, we don't want that, right? We don't want that. Uh, every team's going to be the same because there's only eight teams to pick from, um, and then everyone's just going to go to a real team in round one, right? I think this is one hundred percent right. Uh, wild card is so not an option here. Why not skip round zero? The, the reasons, so I'm in favor of skip round zero. I don't think it's going to happen, but if I was in charge, I'd skip round zero. Uh, the reason still, you get to pick up value options risk-free in the premium pool of players. Uh, will pick, okay, okay, I see what he's saying. Uh, he's saying that you will already get a look at the players, so it's like an unfair look. I disagree in terms of, we used to have the Mab Cup, uh, the NAB Cup used to give you a look at players. I know that that was very, um, like, more rookies were playing and it wasn't the full team, healthy team and stuff like that. Um, but I, I see it like that, you know. you. Why are coaches... Like, we don't know coaches are going to go all out in these games. We don't know Collywood's going to play Dacos boys all game, uh, you know, in position, everything like that. We don't know yet what's going to happen. Apart from this Richmond game, I think they're going to go all out. But even if you made this a preseason game, I think they would have. No one else here, I think, is going to go like, you know, pedal to the metal, uh, guns blazing round one, right? It's just not a uh, round zero. I don't think it's a, a good way to play. Um, so I don't think this is accurate. I, I can see where it's coming from. And I think there is an argument, but I think it is just incorrect. Um, it, it would work the same as a preseason if we skipped round zero. And then uh, this is just some players that would be impacted by round zero. Ooh, yeah, I mean, that, that's a lot of players. I don't like how the AFL's done this. i am be honest. I know it was controversial on Twitter. Um, those who know me know I'm from WA. I li I've lived in Melbourne for like 15, 16 years. But... Um, yeah, I'm just not for it, right? I'm for interstate rounds. I'm not for an opening round type thing like this, where the, the idea is just like steal NRL fans. I'm not for that. Next, we go on to George, um, who I got a great screen grab of. Um, not playing any of the videos, just because copyright YouTube's a bit weird with it. Um, but I have wrote it all down here on notes. So, George's idea is... Don't skip round one, round zero or round one. I don't see why they'd ever skip round one, by the way. Um, I'm guessing he's just saying it for the sake of saying it, but um, yeah, I don't see why they'd ever skip round one. No double game week. So I did see this kind of thrown around a bit. What if we just count it as a double game week? Um, like round zero and one are the same round. The issue is you'd have these teams that are way too important having double game weeks. Like... Dacos with a double game week, that's an instant 200. He'll break the highest score of all time, right? Which I think is like 260 or something like that. 240. Um, we can't do that. Like, double game weeks, it's two FPL. Can't do it, right? No way. No unlimited trades. So this is kind of like different to what JD's saying, uh, where players who haven't played in round zero should still have unlimited trades, like active for them. He's saying no. He's saying that you should make your team and this is kind of like the way it is now. You make your team around it. 
no extra trades. Again, a sentiment I like 1000% agree with. Um, he said 36. I don't know if we're at 36 or 35. I feel like 35 is right, but they might have added one. Uh, treat round zero and one players as buy round. Uh, tra- treat round zero and one as buy rounds. I think they have to. Um, unless they do in the double game week, which it would be the worst decision you could possibly make. Um, it has to be uh, treated as buy rounds. Um, best 12 for round zero, which is probably the way they're going to do it. Like, what is it? It's a uh, six or eight. Tw- uh, is it eight? The the way it is, it, it's probably going to be 12, just um, calculating it. Like, it would be what? So you have 3, 3, 1, 3, puts you at 10. Uh, they probably want you to have a rookie on field. So say it's one rookie per line, you'd, you'd put it at 12, right? Um, well, it would be 13, but I think 12 is a better number. And then st- the, the reason why he's saying that we should still start in round zero is... It keeps the new casual sign-ups, which is a big deal. Um, don't see many people talking about this, but the the sign-ups for Supercoach have been going down every year. Um, we need to keep that going. Like, we need to keep it upwards, upwards trending. You see the AFL's trying it in the worst idea ever, um, but Supercoach needs to bring new players in as well. So the idea is, if we keep it at round zero, when people watch this game, or, you know, like, say you're a hardcore Carlton fan, you're going to watch them play and go, oh, yeah, I haven't made my fantasy team yet. Pull it up, put in a couple of players, and you you know you have these two games or whatever. Yeah, the late signups <laughs> still happen, right? Um, I've done late signups to sports before, um, not AFL but like NFL and stuff like that. Um, where were we? We were here, and then pull this up. But yeah, that's it's basically his idea. I say I agree with a bit of it. The only thing I disagree with, um, hmm. yeah, I'd say I agree with all of it. No get double game week, no unlimited trades. I guess if I was to nitpick, why would you pick any round one players? Well, like, again, we, we've got to do the balance and act. Why, like, round one, round zero players are too incentivized and round one players are too punished. So, yeah, I think Unlimited Trades is a good trade-off for that. Uh, no extra trades? Yep, that's all. all right. So, that's kind of how people are talking about round zero. Um, again, my idea, just skip it. We start at round one. It's a, no, a, The problem with that is, if you start at round one, you're going to have, what is it, 12 teams? Something like that, isn't it? Um 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 teams don't have a buy. Um, there'd be zero reason to pick anyone from these eight because you can easily put together a, a team from these guys, apart from maybe Dacos. Um, yeah, I, I'm, that's the issue with it if you start at round zero. I mean, round one. So you probably do have to add in round zero. It's just I don't know how they're going to handle it. I hope this never, ever, ever comes back. But going into other stuff, we're going to be talking about how Supercoach can boost engagement. So this is a proper important part. I hope you're still watching. Um, Supercoach engagement at the end of the year was a huge talking point. So we've got this video here from JD, which again, I'm not going to play for copyright reasons. Um, But like, we can just skip through it a bit. So the biggest thing is... The last two months of the season aren't fun or engaging. I saw this so much on Facebook threads, Twitter threads, Reddit threads, Discord threads, everything. Um, the, that post, everyone's by, there's no reason to play the game anymore if your team sucks. If you're not, and I felt it, you know, my team was not great last year. Uh, I can't remember where I finished, but I think I finished like top 5k, something like that. Not great. Um, the, there was a, a point where it was like, there's no reason me playing. I can't go up much in Frank because I haven't got the players. I haven't got any trades left. And, like, your team's just stalemated. So this is a big thing that Supercoach, Herald Sun, and Fantasy have to look at. So 
going into JD stuff first because these videos up. His ideas are time gated trades. So we drop nine trade. You start with nine and you get plus nine per DPP drop, right? So uh, what is it? It's six, 12, 17? Six, 12, 18. Um, so this encourages planning. Um, but you only have nine, nine trades to start, right? You have to plan, oh, okay, I've only got nine. How am I going to trade out this rookie, this rookie, this rookie? Oh, I'm getting nine in two weeks' time. What can I plan for? It removes the sole focus away from rookies as well. Um, the current meta for Supercoach, and it's what's winning people Supercoach and stuff like that, winning leagues and everything, is just constant upgrades. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. It never used to be like that. I know that's hard for some people to believe because they're new players. It never used to be like that. It used to be kind of waited for rookies to go up in price a fair bit. Like, I remember, what was it? It was the Tim Kelly year. We waited for him to, like, go to 500k and then traded him out. A lot of players like that where, um, well, it was like the 150k rule. And it used to be, like, even higher than that, it used to be, like, the 200k rule. Um, yeah, I mean, it... It's changed a lot, and I guess metas change over time, but doing something like this where you're time getting trades would very much bring it down. Next one is one I'm all for, injury-free trades. Start with 18 trades, so you get double, um, which I think is how it used to be. Like It used to be like 20 trades, something like that, like far, far back, right? Um, start with 18 trades, and trading officially injured or suspended players doesn't count in the total. So we'll go to where he talks about this. So the way that we count an officially injured player is these dots, right? So in this scenario, exactly the way he explains it, trading Malikan here would not cost a trade. It would cost a trade in the week. Uh, like, you know, you only have two trades a week, three if you boost. Um... It would still cost a trade in that sense, but it wouldn't cost in your overall trade count. Um, this is something I'm, I don't see a reason why it can't be put in. It, it probably leaves people with too many trades at the end of the year because, yeah, like most, I, I'd like to see the stats. I think most trades are injury trades rather than upgrades still. Uh, trading officially injured or suspended players don't count in the total. Still advertises planning in picking non-injury prone players. This is a big thing. People aren't, like, thinking about injury-prone players anymore. Like, it was probably Aaron Hall. Aaron Hall changed it. Um, people didn't... I didn't want to hop on him because of the injury uh, history and stuff like that. And then he ended up being, like, one of the best super coach defenders ever. Um, no upgrade in trades per week. Yeah, the, another thing, right? We're not up in the trade count. We don't need to do that. We don't need to add boosts. We don't need to go, all right... Standard week is three trades, boost is four, buy rounds are four. We don't need to do that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm all for this idea. I think this is a, a good idea here. Um, and then the last idea was separating leagues and overall teams. And another one, I'm all for, right? Like, why can't... If you play Sports Deck, um, I think Sports Deck works under this. Or even Supercoach. Supercoach is two teams because of draft. We do three teams you got ranked, casual, draft. Ranked is your ranked team, right? Um, normal super coach, it's overall rank. There's no leagues. You turn it on. You got your team, and you got the home page where it shows you rank. That's it, and you, you know your other pages or whatever. Um, casual is leagues. You got your home screen, your team, leagues, game day stuff like that. You've got a separate team. Then you've got draft, which is your draft team. The, it's expanding on that, but um, having two teams works fine. I, I don't see why a company like Herald Sun is so against having an, a third game mode. Um, call it casual, call it leagues, call it head-to-head, -head, call it whatever. Ranked, casual, draft. I think it's the best overall thing that can be added into the game because if you're playing for ranked, you're going to keep playing every week. Or you're going to drop that and go into casual. So you're keeping players on the website, keeping them in-house, which is a big deal. Uh, too many people just drop the game. 
Um, yeah, it, and it keeps focus on overall if you're doing good instead of pivoting into leagues, or keeps focus in leagues if you're not doing good in overall. It's it, it's a great idea. So that's JD stuff. I uh, highly recommend watching this video yourself. I didn't go through it great. Um, he obviously has more details, 15 minute video. Go through it, it's a good video. Um, and then we'll go through George's idea, who I can't remember. I think this is a video on his channel as well. Either that, no, it's at the end of this one, all right? So go watch this one. Um, reward better starting teams by limiting boost to a per month or per bunch of weeks format. All for it, all for it. Uh, anything that limits trades, I'm all for. I'm someone who is an aggressive trader, and I think that trading needs to be limited. Um, so if we limit boosts, I think the idea he gives is, say we do it, you get two per month of the season. The season runs about six, seven months, or eight months, something like that. You get two per month. It's probably too high, two, but um, so you get, even if you go to per bunch of weeks, say, like, if we piggyback, like, we combine these ideas, right, the per DPP change, which, we'll get into it, this also my idea, um, but, you know, you, you get a better split on when you can give people boosts. It stops people from having a rubbish starting team, right? Like, no offense, half the starting teams I see are rubbish. Um, just players that are, like, what was going through your head type of picks? I do the same thing, right? I'm not free from that either. Um, and then they just boost, 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 round one, two, three, and almost a brand new team in there. Not And it's pre-price changes, so you're getting all the players that are going to go up. It's, yeah. And then um, I imagine this is coming off the NPA's in-season tournament, but a top 2048, the reason it's 2048 is because it's the multiple of a tournament bracket, um, tournament at the end of the season. Sports Deck does this, and I think Supercoach used to. Um, you take some of the money out of, what is it, it's 50k if you win it, isn't it? Say you drop that to 45. The winner of the tournament gets 5k. It keeps people involved. Um, even if you're top 2,000, you know you're not going to win it. There's a chance of winning something now, so there's a reason to keep upgrading your team. Uh, and keep logging in every day. Issue with it is it only impacts the top 2,000 teams, right? If For me, I was ranked 5,000 or 7,000 because I had a terrible start to the season. It doesn't help me. I would still, you know, tune out of the game. But it's a good idea. Um, I don't see why we don't have a tournament like that. And then we'll go into my idea. Uh, it's kind of combining them and just kind of how I see the game. First one, less trades. So, if we are currently at 36, yeah, it works. If it's at 35, it's the same thing. I'm saying go from 36 down to 32 or 30. Uh, 30 is when I joined. It was 30. Um, I Game was fine. Game worked. You got to the end of the season. You had a full premium team. There wasn't an issue if you were smart in picking players. Uh, the trades were added due to that thing that happened in... Um, 2020, um, the issues with that, right? That that was the reason why we had added trades. They gave us five extra because we had so many people that were laid out with uh, this injury or you know, problem that they couldn't play. So Supercoach said, all right, here's five extra trades, fix up your team. But for some reason it stayed. I don't know why it stayed other than them getting feedback saying that Trading is the funnest part of the game, um, but I yeah, I think it should be removed. And it returns us back to the planning trades beforehand meta. No one plans trades, really. It's kind of the spur of the moment. Highest average, bring him in. Oh, didn't work. Trade him out, bring in the next highest average. There's no planning to it. You're not planning three weeks, four weeks ahead of time. Like, I think this year, um, you, you kind of got hurt a fair bit by, like, I'm going to target him post-buy and, like, planning that and not doing it straight away, like, first possible opportunity. If you waited to post-buy, his price has changed, his averages have changed, there's now three other players that are averaging good, so you go after that. You're, you've dropped in rank because you haven't brought in that guy. It's, you know, 
I think we need to go back to the planning trades meta um, instead of just aggressively trading. And it punishes over-aggressive trading. If you only have 30 trades and you keep doing the boost thing and you go nine trades in the first three rounds, you're, <laughs> you're pretty much screwed by the end of the year, right? Um, the only downside I found to this is could lose players if an injury occurs to a high ownership player towards the end of the year more so. So say, who was the highest owned player? I think it was Dacos. I think it was Nick Dacos. Um, say he gets injured at the end of the year like he did and players are out of trades. They're just going to turn the game off and not worry about it, right? Um, that is an issue. But I think all of, all in all, I think it's a good trade. Just um, a good trade off. Just go back to thirty trades, right? Instead of thirty six, even thirty two. That's why I gave thirty two. It's kind of like a leeway. Like we're going back down, but we're not going to drop you back to thirty. You have two extra that you can plan. Um, like you, you can see it as thirty and go. All right, two trades for the end of the year, and it's a thirty two. Time great time gated boost access. So this is going off both of these. Um, JD says just trades overall. I think trades are fine. I think it's the boosts that are the issue. Boosts are the strongest thing that they've ever added <laughs> to a, a fantasy format, all right? Uh, apart from, like, the wild card in uh, FPL. Start with one boost. You get plus two in round six. You get plus two in round eight. You keep your five boosts. It, we're not changing five boosts. We're just changing that you can't use them all at the start of the year you should be incentivized to pick a great starting team. And if you pick a bad one, it should be a thing you have to work through to get to a good team instead of like, oh, boost, 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 good team. I'm better than the people that had a good starting team. Uh, one boost, and that kind of just helps with, you know, thought this rookie was going to get minutes. He kind of sucks. He's out of position. Um, this premium is playing out of position. Um, someone gets injured. There's always an early season injury, it, it helps with all that. Uh, removes the get-out-of-jail-free card, which is exactly what I was talking about for bad starting teams. Emphasizes safe picks in the starting team, again, what I was saying, and you will miss price rises. No one misses price rises now. Everyone gets all of them. That If you miss one, you're so far behind the eight ball. Back in the day, you used to miss him, right? Like, oh, he's going up. I know he's going to go up a lot, but I just I can't spare the trades here. This, going back to this, where you don't have three three trades here, three trades here, three trades here, use it in a buy round, you've got four trades, you're going to miss price rises, and it's good for the game. And then, apart from this one, uh, separating, adding a third game mode, uh, I think is a better way, instead of separating them, I think add a third game mode, this needs to happen, needs to happen. Change in the Supercoach scoring algorithm. The champion data scoring has been great for however long we've had it. We need to make an amends to it. Add position-based scoring like in the FPL. So for those who don't play FPL, uh, Premier League, Fantasy, per position, I might be able to pull up my team, but it's going to be garbage, so I'm not going to pull it up. I haven't looked at it since like the first week. Um, defenders will get extra points if they score a goal. Defenders will get extra points if they have an assist. Midfielders will get different points to defenders if they have score a goal. Forwards get the least points from a goal, I think. Yeah, because it's their job to score a goal, <laughs> right? So if we go position-based scoring, forwards get more points for a goal. I think currently under the system, it's nine points for a goal. Say we up it to 15 points for a goal for a forward. Right, that's almost double. Um, a player that kicks like five, say Tom Lynch or Bailey Fritch had a couple of big goal games. We just up it. Now he's averaging high 80s, 90s, maybe even 100, right? Um, I think this fixes a lot of it. It makes forwards and defenders viable. Of the forward line this year, I don't know if Supercoach is still open. Um, let's see if I can bring it up. Not what I want. I want uh, AFL. Um, of the forward line, midfielder, 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 midfielder. I guess forward, but 
you brought him in for him to play midfield. He's a forward and he's a ruckman. We didn't pick any forwards. We go to the highest averaging forwards of the year. Uh, the forward position is the worst of these, by the way. At least defender, you have kick-ins. Um, go to average. The highest averaging guys, right? So say you... I actually had the top ones. Um, midfielder. Defender. Uh, Ruckman. He's a forward, so you got one. He's a midfielder. He's a midfielder. Defender. Uh, Ruckman. Forward. Two in the top 15. That's not good enough. Uh, we go to the top 20. Three. Four. All right, we've got four in the top 20. The rest are midfielders. <laughs> it's not good. Especially if you go to total points. I reckon... Uh, okay. I mean, he won the common. But um, I think we got to change the scoring algorithm for forwards. Uh, and lower, lowers the midfielder's average. Okay, so... We've had this issue the last couple of years where averages are getting out of control. I think it was the year before last, we had the most, like, 115-plus midfielders ever in the history of the game. Even this year, like, we've got over 115, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9. So you could have, I don't think you could, but say you did, you had a, a full midfield plus a bench of 115 average players. We can't do that. So in this, what we do is we just say it's plus, I think it is plus three for a disposal. Dropped a plus one for a midfielder. For a defender, because it's, you know, a kick in and stuff like that, keep it at plus three. For a forward, if they get a touch, it's plus five because they finish finishing games on 10 touches, right? So... It does mean that Supercoach has to be a bit more, you know, proactive on this guy's not actually a forward, but he's getting scored as a forward. Um, but yeah, I think this is a great thing for the game. And then quality of life changes, remove emergencies, um, just take the best score, right? Like how many times has the emergency thing broken? Like is it, just just remove it. Um, it takes the best score, not even the best score. It just takes the first score on the bench if there is a score. I don't see why we still have emergencies. I don't think any other thing uses them. And then the util utility sub. So add one more and just make it a utility sub. Fantasy uses it. It doesn't break the game or anything. It's just a sub there. There, the quality of life changes I'd like to see. Apart from like, you know, make it fit on the screen for content creators. The team doesn't fit properly. I have to zoom out so far. Um, yeah, and probably, you know, make the screen look a bit better. But that's all I've got for today. A couple of changes for Supercoach, a couple of changes in the AFL. Uh, let me know what you guys think of it all and what you guys would like to see changed as well. Um, this is a pretty, like, big conversation to have with people. I was going to have it at the end of the last season. I was burnt out. Couldn't do it. But, yeah, uh, I'll see you all next time. Tasty out. You'll probably actually see me in December when it opens. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing more Supercoach stuff until then. But yeah, see you all next time.